like this. Put your hands up. And sweet the best music. Another one. Let's go. Middle finger she needed. Busting through the crowd. They gon' feel me now. Straight shooter from the hip. Yeah, we have the end. Well, good day, class. Today we're going to look at cultural diffusion, convergence, and divergence by looking at the term of beauty. Hands in the sky like this. Put your hands up. And sweet the best music. What do you think when you see this picture? Does this person look happy, unhappy, attractive? Why do you think someone would wear this? Today's society accepts the idea of improving one's image, says Dr. Ivo Patangi, Brazil's most famous plastic surgeon. Here, a patient receives an injection of high, hyaluronic acid to pump up her lips at the Brazilian Society for Anesthetic Medicine in Rio de, de Janeiro in 2008. Chinese-American TV personality Julie Chen reveals she had plastic surgery to make her eyes look less Asian to advance her career. Korean women are getting surgeries for permanent smiles. In Venezuela, breast augmentation is so widespread it's a popular coming-of-age gift or 15th birthday celebration. What century are we in anyway? Around the world, women continue to go to extreme measures in pursuit of beauty. We're going to take a look at our ideas of beauty from around the world. Take copious notes. Hello everyone. Beauty standards have changed many times throughout human history. What was considered perfect, for example in the Middle Ages, today looks rather strange. However, few people think that even in the 21st century, the ideas of what is beautiful can be very different depending on the country. In today's video, we'll tell you about the standards and ideas of beauty in different cultures. Some may seem a little unusual to you, while others will really surprise you. Let's get it on. Japan. In Western countries, a perfect smile is associated with the symmetry of the shape of the teeth and their uniform position to the jaw. To achieve this effect, people put on braces and use them stubbornly for years to fix the smile and make it perfect. But in Japan, the situation is very different. They have a concept known as yeba. It means uneven teeth, in particular protruding upper canines, and the Japanese consider such a smile to be very cute. Yes, according to the inhabitants of the land of the rising sun, a yeba smile adds a new touch to a person's appearance and makes him more unusual. It can be said that crooked teeth are something of a cute tiny mole, which only emphasizes beauty and adds charm. One of the reasons for the popularity of Yeba is that in Japan they appreciate natural beauty and don't consider it necessary to correct in any way what nature has given you. However, it's only upper canines and front teeth that are charming for the Japanese. If the smile looks uneven due to the fact that the teeth grow at an incorrect angle and affect the profile, then people will certainly try to correct this problem. By the way, the Japanese prefer to wear braces on the inside so as to not show others that they're working on their smile. Iran According to statistics, Iran has the highest percentage of nose surgeries in the world. This is partly due to the country's traditions, which demand that women only show their faces. Of course, they want their faces to be perfect, and even with the high cost of plastic surgery, about $2,500, that doesn't stop anyone. But it's not just about pursuing beauty. For Iranian women, and sometimes men, a nose job is also an indicator of wealth and social status. Surgery is so desirable that many patients patients wear bandages long after full recovery. Yeah, just to show that they've already undergone the procedure and have been able to afford such a significant expense. And some even wear fake bandages. That is, they stick a bandage on their nose even though they haven't undergone surgery. So everyone thinks that under the bandage hides the work of a plastic surgeon worth several thousand dollars. Tajikistan 
Since ancient Rome and Greece, having a unibrow was praised by poets and thinkers. It was believed that a woman with such a characteristic was unusually beautiful and desired by all men. That was a long, long time ago. But if broad, dark eyebrows became fashionable all over the world only a few years ago, then in Tajikistan, thick eyebrows and even eyebrows that have merged above the bridge of the nose have long been considered the standard of beauty. Only a few generations ago, there was even an omen. The smaller the distance between a girl's eyebrows, the closer her husband would be to her. And in some parts of Tajikistan, even today, unibrows are considered a sign of beauty. If nature hasn't given a woman bushy eyebrows, she paints them on herself to look prettier for the opposite sex. Moreover, locals are convinced that unibrows are a symbol of luck and longevity. Among women, moreover, it's synonymous with purity and innocence, and is a symbol of vitality among men. In general, dense unibrows symbolize all the good things that you can imagine. South Korea In South Korea, plastic surgery is not only widespread, it's also considered an absolutely normal thing. In larger cities, you can find surgical-related billboards and clinics that promise to make anyone beautiful. According to statistics, one in five female Seoul residents between the ages of 19 and 49 at least once was under a surgeon's scalpel. And this isn't even surprising, because South Korea has quite strict beauty standards. The most important of these is the shape of the face. The face of a really beautiful Korean woman must resemble a heart, a wide upper part, and a narrow chin. To achieve a perfect appearance, many Koreans undergo complex surgeries over and over again, and it must be said that such operations often include fractures of the jaw, removal of its parts, and other frightening procedures. Of course, the rehabilitation period is not very pleasant either, because the patient can't eat solid food for a long time. But what can you do? Beauty, as they say, requires sacrifice. Papua New Guinea. In Papua New Guinea, as well as in some African countries, there's an ancient tradition of scarring the body. Scars are often applied to men during the initiation rituals of warriors, and among women, these patterns are proof of their extraordinary beauty. A future warrior does not cry either during such a procedure, and the woman doesn't show her tears either, as her family happiness and ability to marry depend on the scars. Each drawing on the body is different. It has its own meaning and purpose too. Some of the scars can even be considered a kind of passport. By looking at these drawings, one can determine a person's age and position in society. For example, in the Gaanda tribe of Nigeria, girls get their first scars at the age of five. The patterns are applied first on the stomach, and after a while on the waist, hips, forearms, and forehead. Therefore, the different stages of life are marked before the girl gets married. And in the Bata Mariba tribe, children are scarred so that the tribal spirits protect them. It's worth saying that this is always a very painful process, which can also cause various diseases. Mauritania in many countries, it's common to think that the thinner a girl is, the more attractive she is. However, this is not the case in Mauritania, where it's believed that a woman's beauty lies in her wide body. Cultural stereotypes have forced women to prepare for their future from childhood. They follow a certain diet or take special medications that allow them to gain weight. Young women do this because the extra pounds make them more attractive to men and more valuable in society. Sometimes, girls are even sent to some sort of summer camp, where they're force-fed in a special way, eating 16,000 calories a day. Although the tradition has begun to disappear in urban areas, many still follow it in rural areas. In addition, the only study conducted in Mauritania's Ministry of Social Policy, Family and Children revealed that 55% of men considered women's thinness to be a serious disadvantage. 60% of women believe that considerable weight is an advantage. On average, two out of five women openly stated that fat women receive more attention from men than thin women. China in many Asian countries, including China and Thailand, pale skin is considered a true beauty standard. And this isn't a new trend. Even in ancient Chinese literature, a beautiful person is described as fair-skinned. If you visit a local store looking for face cream, you'll hardly find any that don't contain all kinds of whitening agents. By the way, men's aftershave products are no exception. Many residents of Asian countries refuse to appear on beaches without special masks, so as to not tan accidentally. They are 
are willing to do almost anything to protect their skin. But what's the reason? Skin color in Asia is directly related to social class. If the skin is dark, then the person works in the fields and therefore is poor. Of course, in a society where people want to be rich, nobody wants to look like a peasant. Some hide under umbrellas, and on sunny days, residents of big cities try to leave their house less often. Myanmar in the highlands of Southeast Asia in Myanmar, the interesting Padong people live, enjoying great attention among tourists. The thing is that Padong girls wear brass coils around their necks from the age of five. First, a six-ring spiral is worn around their neck, and then the number of rings increases by one each year. At the time of marriage, the number of rings reaches its maximum, and after the wedding, as a rule, no more rings are added. The woman's neck is therefore stretched, which sometimes results in an increase in length of up to 40 centimeters. Sometimes the construction is so high and uncomfortable that it's difficult for girls to even turn their heads. The custom of wearing rings is associated with the specific ideas of the Padong tribe of beauty. The long neck here is considered a symbol of well-being and beauty. In addition, this design protects local women from tigers and avoids confusion. The fact is that in this region, the theft of girls by neighboring tribes and unauthorized escapes happened a lot. Therefore, the Padong invented this original way of protecting their women from dangers and neighbors. Namibia Himba is the name of an ancient African nomadic tribe. Their lives have remained virtually unchanged over the centuries, despite wars, civilization, and droughts. Nomads live in Namibia, and their exact number is quite difficult to calculate. The Himba have almost no water, too. Every drop they can extract will be carefully preserved and consumed. Don't even ask us about how they bathe. The Himba's survival depends on a magical ointment, to which they owe their famous red skin tone, a mixture of butter derived from the milk of their cows, and a variety of herbal elixirs, as well as bright red volcanic pumice powder. Himba women spread this product all over their body and hair several times a day. The ointment helps maintain the necessary level of hygiene, protects against sunburn and insect bites. It also makes the skin incredibly soft, red, and beautiful. New Zealand The indigenous people of New Zealand, the Maori, were the main population of that country before the arrival of the Europeans. One of the distinguishing features of the Maori is their tattoos. While in today's world, tattoos are used to decorate the body, for the Maori, it's also a kind of ID card. A tattoo on a Maori body can tell the entire lineage of its bearer, and even carry a secret message to the rest of the world. These drawings also serve as part of the initiation ritual. For example, Maori women traditionally tattoo themselves on the chin during adolescence. Surprisingly, Maori don't have two identical tattoos. Each one of them is unique. The drawing is always very complex and detailed to demonstrate both the skill and talent of the artist and the beauty of the tribe's culture. Hey, stop being lazy. It's time to use that brain of yours. Shooter from the hip, yeah, we have the game.